Ama, salamat po sa araw na ito, Lord, at uh, di na ako mukaming muli, Lord. Uh, unang-una, upang dakilain ka, Lord, to worship you, to praise you, Lord. And uh, I'm so thankful that we are all here, Lord, ready and able, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, to understand, to receive, O oh God, all the things, the truth, the revelation, O oh God, that is intended for us today. Lord, help us uh, open our heart, our minds, our ears, our eyes, Lord, our Lord, everything in our whole being, O oh God, upang maunawaan namin lubusan, Lord, ang lahat ng bagay na bibigay niyo sa amin, O oh God. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so... Uh, if you remember, uh, last time, uh, ang ating dear sister Sorina ay nag-preach uh, about you know, the parables of the talent. And it is one of the most important uh, parables as well. You know, uh, telling us about the, the way that God uh, distributes the talents according to our abilities. You know, that's why may iba-ibang amount ng ng talents na ipinagkakaloob ng Panginoon. You know, uh, iba-ibang amounts ng gifts na pinagkakaloob ng Panginoon. And so, uh, today, it is all about the same in relation with the, the parables. And this is the parables of the minas. You know, uh, it is all about stewardship, mga kapatid. You know, and we know why stewardship kasi wala tayong pag-aari sa mundo. Everything belongs to God. No, even your houses, even your children, even your yung lahat ng meron kayo, even your breath belongs to God. You know, even the life that we have belongs to God. Kaya nga we are just stewards of everything that we have. Yun ang dapat nating malaman. Um, so I entitled this one stewardship. We are God's managers. You know. Managers of what? Managers of His words, so to speak. So let's open our Bible to Luke 19, 12 to 15. As it says, let us read. Therefore He said, a certain man, nobleman, went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return, so he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas and said to them do business till i come but his citizen hated him and sent a delegation after him saying we will not have this man reign over us and so it was that when he returned having received the kingdom he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. First, let us analyze the first that, uh, that parable, uh, Luke 19, 12 to 15. Who are the characters in the parable? Are you able to put them all together? Seven. To join them together? Okay. The nobleman, first the nobleman. Who, who is the nobleman? Thank you. The nobleman. He is the rich man, the master, the owner of the house. In, in short, he, he, he is Jesus Christ. Because what it says is that he is to receive a kingdom and to return. You know, in our, in our uh, studies of the Word of God, uh, it is him the Lord Jesus Christ who went up to heaven and he is about to come back, you know. Uh, first by, you know, the rapture and then the second coming as we, so to speak. Then next, who, are, who is the other character? The servants, the noblemen, the servants. Who are the servants? Us. Us. The stewards, the managers of God, the, of the masters, the Christians. You know? So I just would like to give you uh, an, an eye view or an idea of the nobleman is the Lord Jesus Christ, the servants are the Christians, and the citizens. There's a citizen there. 
But his citizens hated him. Who are the ones that hated the Lord Jesus Christ? Exactly. Spot on, uh, Tessalina. These are the unbelievers. Those who doesn't believe. Those who don't uh, recognize the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are the citizens. No? They are the one that is outside the households of God, so to speak. Okay, so take note. There are three uh, characters, nobleman, the servants, and the citizens. And then the minas. What are the minas? Minas are the same as the talents. These are the gifts, the opportunities that was given to the Christians, to the servants. The mysteries and the truth of the word of God. Amen? So these are, but mind you, talents and gifts, opportunities are only given to servants. They will never be given to the citizens. Amen? Amen. They will only be given to the households of God, Amen. the family of God. It's very important to take note. Okay, now, uh, the scenario. What's the scenario? A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So, the Lord Jesus Christ went up to heaven and he is coming back. That's the scenario. So a certain nobleman to receive a kingdom, to be appointed king, to speak and to return, that is, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This represents him, which is now he is uh, seated at the right hand of the Father, being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And mind you, he will come again. First is what we call by the rapture, taking with him all that belongs to him. That is us. Faithful and good Christians. No? And to judge after that the second coming, which in the Bible study you have studied, that he is coming back the second time to judge. To judge who? Those who are not for him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Reward are for those who are good and faithful servants. Judgment are for those who are the unfaithful ones and the unbelievers. Amen? Uh, so let us be clear about that. Now, in Revelation 22, 12, it says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I just want you to know, to make sure that the Lord himself is really coming back with rewards and with judgment. Amen? So that's in Revelation 22. Now, the rapture I'm telling you about is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then he who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall be always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So, you can see that this is what I'm telling you about, the rapture. The Lord will meet everyone who belongs to Him in the air. If you remember, uh, I don't know whether we have uh, watched the Left Behind. Yeah, we did, isn't it? Okay, so we will, we will watch it again so that we will be remembered about what's going to happen on the rapture. That suddenly people are going missing because the Lord had taken them up in the air and the rapture will be not known to the world but the second coming is because the rapture is only will be known to those who will be raptured. Bawa kung tayo lahat dito ay mararapture ng Lord, alam natin na darating siya para kunin tayo. But mind you, first are the dead for Christ will rise first. That is the first resurrection that we're talking about. So sabi nga ng Bible, blessed are those who had, who had part on the first resurrection. Kasi yung first resurrection, e mauunang mga patay na babangon muna, then susunod tayong mga buhay. Kung hindi tayo mamamatay pagdating ng Lord. Sabi nga ni nanay, sabi ng Lord sa kanya, darating ang Lord nang hindi pa siya namamatay. Just imagine that. 
if that, that conversation of God with Nanai is true, let's say Nanai will still live for 10 years. 83, 93 na siya. Eh kung buhay pa siya, dumating ang Lord ng 93 years old siya. Then buhay pa siya. You know? To God be the glory. Who knows? You know? But that is something to think about. You know? That is something to think about. What? Five years from now, maybe seven years from now, three years from now? Who knows? God can come anytime. Are we ready? That's the big question. So, that is the rapture that we're talking about. So, and as well, in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not be all asleep. Yan. Tulad nga sabi ni nanay, we shall not be all asleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will raise, be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Yeah. These are the passages in the Bible which really tells us about the coming rapture. Kaya nga, pag may nagtanong sa inyo, these are two of those na pwede nyo sabihin. Amen? Now, okay. Second, Second scenario, the nobleman, could you kindly go back to that? Uh, uh, Luke 19, 12 to 15? Yes, okay. The nobleman, the second scenario is that the nobleman gives minas to the servants. Is it there? Okay. He gives minas to the servants. In the first parable that uh, Ate Surin had, uh, had preached, God had given specific talents according to the abilities of the Christians. So five, two, and one. But in here, it's different. The Lord gave the same minas all one on among the ten servants. So there's a difference, but, but the, 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 the common denominator, I should say, the, the same is that uh, it is all about the fruit of what you did with the talents that was given to you. You know? The actions you have taken in order to make that gift grow. So it is about again, also related to the seed of God that was given. Because this is the one that is really was given by the Lord. It is the seed of God which really should grow in us. The thing is that how will it grow? It depends on what action one should take. Amen? Amen? Are you with me? Okay, look at that. So, delivered to them ten minas and said to them, do business till I come. The most important verse, oh, word on that verse, 13, is do business till I come. Because that is the commandments of God. That is the one that has to be taken into consideration very, very importantly. Because that is the word of God telling us, do business till I come. And to all Christians like us, that is the same commandment that the Lord is telling us. What will you do with the talents I have given you? No? What will you do with the money here? It is uh, the money that was given to you. Even though it's only one mina, what will you do with it in order to make it grow? And even on the parable of the talents, what will you do with the talents, the five talents that was given to you in order to make it grow? Amen? They are all the same. They are all the same, brothers and sisters. Now, uh, take note again, the most important word there is do business till I come. Now, okay. So, again, only servants will have minas. Only servants will have talents. You may say, oh, other people outside, outside the church, even the unbelievers have abilities. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes, they have ability because God has given all abilities. But not all was given talents. No? Remember the talents? They were given talents according to their abilities. So everyone has abilities. The only difference between us and the people outside here, there, is that we are using the abilities we have with God. Amen? Then, they are using their abilities for themselves or with themselves. And that's the biggest difference there is, you know? If we will not be able to use those talents and those minas together with the Lord, believe me, it will all be in vain at the end of the day. Psalms 127.1 says, look at this, unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. At the end of the day, whatever those people are doing, whatever those people outside there are gaining, as what the Bible says in Luke 9.27, 9.25, sorry. What profit is it for a man if he gains the whole world and yet himself is destroyed or lost? See, at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, even though they are there, very rich, very powerful, but without God, yeah. it's nothing. Yeah. Are you with me? No matter how much they gain, no matter how much they earn, no matter how big their houses, no matter how many cars they have, no matter how many wives they, they marry, if without God, it's all nothing. It's all nothing. You know? Mark 8.36 as well. In all the Gospels, it says the same. You know? For what it will profit a man if he gains the whole world. It's just there. The whole world and loses his own soul. Yeah. You know? Ano yung nga naman ang kayamanan mo? Sa impyerno ka rin mapupunta. No? What will it profit you? Nothing, di ba? Nothing. And this is talking about people outside there. But it's not only the difference between us and the outside world. What more important to take note and to be, to give a, a very big consideration, brothers and sisters, is that the difference between the Christians inside the household of God. Because there are differences. And I pray that you will take no offense as I reveal to you and give you a rebuke on this matter with regards to our being a Christian in, inside the household. What's the difference between Christians? You know, considering the minas that was given to each and every one of us. Remember, the minas were given, the talents were given to Christians. But believe me, five, two, and one. In the first parable that we have heard, five is a good and faithful servant, two, a good and faithful servant, but the one who was given the least, but yet he is the laziest and the most wicked. But mind you, these are all Christians. These are all children of God, so to speak. And in the, even the minas as well. Let's look on uh, the next uh, verse of it. Luke 16 to 19. Luke uh, 19, 16 to 19. It says, Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina had earned ten minas. So given one, earned ten. Okay. And the second one, well done, good and servant, because you were faithful in very little, have authority over ten cities. Next one, please. 
And the second came saying, Master, your mina had earned five minas. Likewise, he said to you, you also be over five cities. Then the next. 19. Okay. Five cities. And another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I had kept to put away in a handkerchief. Itinago po sa panyo. Yung sa talent, itinago sa lupa. Ibinaon sa lupa, hindi ba? Ito, itinago naman sa panyo. Ba? Tapos siguro, sinilid pa sa, sa ano niya. For I feared you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. The same as what in the parables of the talents. Sabi niya, alam ko kasi, amo na, masyado kang ano eh. No? Tumutubos ka na, hindi ka naman nag, hindi, hindi ka naman nagtanim eh, aani ka. No? Umaani ka, hindi ka naman nagtanim. Yun ang sabi niya. Ginawa niyang napaka tamad ng amo, ginawa niya pang usurero yung amo. What a wicked servant, isn't it? What a wicked servant. Yung po ang sinasabi ko sa inyong diferensya. We are all Christians, but we are different in the way we do things. And these are the things that I would like to pinpoint to us today. You know. I know na, you know, somebody might be offended or somebody might, might not accept the truth of the Lord, pero mahalaga po, ito po ang aming obligation and ika nga ang responsibility to make the truth of the Lord known to us. You know. Matthew 7, 21 to 23 says, even the word of God says, that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. The very important verse there, he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, what is the distinction of, or differences between Christians, servants, and non-servants. Ayan. Isang distinction po yan. Lahat po tayo Christians, pero hindi po tayo nag, lahat nagsaserve sa Lord. Amen? Totoo po, hindi ba? Meron nga Zimbabwe, 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 Zimbabwe. Ganon. Pero tayo po rito, hindi po ganon. Hindi po ba? Tayo po dito, we are doing everything for the ministry. We are helping in any which way, little things for the ministry. Kayo, yung difference pong yan, eh big, big deal po yan sa Lord. Amen. Very big deal po yan sa Lord. Yes. And I can assure you, at the judgment day, o sa pagdating ng Lord, you will see the difference. Hindi po pwedeng pikit mata, mumulat ang Diyos, pareho kayo. Otherwise, the Lord will not be just and righteous. Amen. Tandaan niyo po yan. Kahit po sa ating mga anak, you know, kung ang isang anak natin ay suwail at ang anak natin isa ay masunurin, hindi po po pwedeng pareho ang pagtingin niyo. Hindi po mangyayari yan. You will give discipline to the other one and reward to the other one. Amen? Amen? To the extent na kung yung suwail, eh, gusto na kayong patayin, believe me, you will do everything to eliminate him. Maniwala po kayo, ganun po yun. And even so sa Panginoon. Lahat po tayong Kristiyano ay anak ng Lord, pero hindi po tayo lahat masunurin. Yeah? Sino lang po ang papasok? Only those who will do the will of my Father in heaven. Now, what is the distinction naman between servants Christian? Yan. Kasi po, sabi natin, lahat ng Christian, the distinction is, there's a non-servant and a servant Christian. Eh ngayon, among the servants naman, what are the difference? Ayan. 
a good and faithful servant at saka wicked servant. Yan. Alam, inuunti-unti po nating pinupurify kasi po, yung pinaka-end po nito, yun lang po ang i-consider ng Lord. Yung good and faithful servants. Kaya po gusto kong ipaliwanag sa inyo ng maigi ito. Dahil pag ito po na-miss nating lahat, masasayang po ang mga pinagagawa natin. Kung hindi rin lang natin iaayos ng tama according sa will ng Lord. Kaya gusto ko pong ipinpoint ng, ma- ma- ng very, very clear po sa inyo. Difference between a serving Christians and not. You know, in Malachi 3.16 to 18, gusto ko po kayong, yan, tingnan nyo. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened to hear them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. So there's a book of remembrance for those who fear the Lord. Next, please. 17? Okay. They shall be mine, says the Lord. Ayan. Huh? They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Ayan. Siya na mismo, ang Panginoon na mismo, ang nagbigay ng halimtulad sa isang anak na nagsaserve sa magulang at hindi. You know? They will be like jewels. They will be my jewel, sabi ng Lord. Those who fear the Lord, ah. Ngayon, ano po ba yung fear the Lord? Paano mo sasabihin you fear the Lord? If you obey His commandments. Pwede ba sabihin you fear the Lord tapos hindi mo ginagawa ang sinasabi niya? Yung po ba ang fear the Lord? Hindi. Pag talagang you fear the Lord, you will obey what He says. Pag sinabi niyang wag, wag. Pag sinabi niyang hindi, hindi. Pag sinabi niyang okay, okay. Yan. Yun po ang nag-fear sa Lord. You know? And that's the very big difference between one. Now, the commandments of God is what separates the two. No? Between a serving, a good and faithful servant uh, Christian and a wicked Christian. The commandments of God ay ang nagbibigay ng difference sa dalawa. Kasi yung isa sumusunod, yung isa hindi. Yeah. That's the dividing line between the two servants. One is obeying and one is not obeying. Ang tanong ko, how about yung partial obedience? Is it okay sa Lord? No. Susunod ka ngayon bukas hindi? No. What do you think? No. No? Sabi nila, delayed obedience is disobedience. Yes. No? Disobedience pa rin. Ika nga. A good and faithful servant is one who follows the commandment of the Lord without compromise. Yan. Without compromise. While an unfaithful servant is one who compromises the commandments of the Lord. Thus, in a given point of time, commits the biggest and most grievous sin of all, idolatry. Let me just tell you why, you know. Let me just tell you why. Let us bring back Luke 19 to 12 to 13. No. 19 to, okay. The 13th one, the do business. Because I would like to emphasize the do business till I come. Because that is the commandments of God on the parable. You know? And only two among the servants followed it. And the other one, like on the parables of the talent, didn't follow the commandments. The do business till I come. Because this, this word of God, these commandments of God, are the one that separates a faithful and good servants from a wicked one. No? So, now, 
good and faithful servants. If I ask you, are you a good and faithful servant? If I ask you, can you qualify or can you, can you assess yourself? Are you a good and faithful servant? Do you follow God's command without compromise? Hindi niyo po ba nakokompromiso ang salita ng Lord? Yeah. To make an example, without offense to anybody, let's talk about the Sabbath. Yeah. Kasi ito po yung isang bagay na gusto kong mag-emphasis dito dahil ang Sabbath po, sa generation natin ngayon, akala nila ganun-ganun lang ang Sabbath. Let me just bring you to the origin of the Sabbath. Genesis 2, 1 to 3. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all of the host of them were finished. It's not, it should be there. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended His work which He had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then, is, isn't that there? Nawala ba, babes? It should be there. Genesis uh, 2, 1 to 3. Because it is he rested from all his work which God has created and made. Okay. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended this work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because it is he rested from all his work which God created and made. Among the days, it's only one day that God had blessed and sanctified. Just imagine, imagine. Huh? This is, we're talking about creation week. More than 6,000 years ago, God has already instituted the seven-day week period. That even up to now, hindi ba kayo na, na, you, are you not amazed? Imagine. It was instituted by the Lord from the very beginning, and yet up to now, it stands. We are working six days a week and have an off day, one day. People are changing it. They even have five days and two days off. Europeans, 45, uh, 47 and a half hours a week. But yet, in totality, it is a six-day, one-day off. But people sp still are desecrating it, working seven days a week. Just imagine that. And God had blessed and sanctified that one day for you and me. For what reason, brothers and sisters? And let me just, again, in Exodus 20, 8 to 11, not only that he had instituted it from the very beginning, he even put it in the Ten Commandments. Exodus 8, he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it. The only commandments, take note, that has the word remember. Why do you think? God want us to remember it. Kasi alam ng Lord na ito ang kakalibutan ng tao ngayon. The most important day na even in our present generation ay talagang kinakalimutan na ng tao. That's why yung emphasis na remember ay ang pinakamahalagang word dyan. Sabi ng Lord, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. To keep it holy. No. 
Huwag po natin kuning lightly ang linggo. Kasi kung linggo ang dineclare nating Sabbath day. Ang Sabbath day po, sabi ng Bible, Sabbath, day, Sabbath are made for men and not men for Sabbath. What does it mean? Kasi po ngayon, iba-iba ang schedule natin. Merong nagtatrabaho ng Martes, natatapos ng Lunes. So, kailan na Sabbath mo? Di pag-off mo? The very thing is that you work six days, whatever it is, but on the seventh day, you sanctified it and give it to God. Kahit anong araw pa ito. As long as you give it to God, you keep it holy as your Sabbath day to the Lord. Paano ko gagawin ito? Abe, kung anong ginagawa natin sa linggo, gusto mo mag-worship at mag-service tayo sa bahay mo? Okay yun. Kung yan ang day na ginagawa mo, din declare mo Sabbath sa Lord. We will do it for your sake. Just keep it holy. Just keep your vows to the Sabbath day. That's all it is, mga kapatid. It doesn't matter what day it is. As long as you declare it that that's your Sabbath day. Let's continue in the, the nine. Six days you shall labor. Again, inulit niya yan. Six days you shall labor. Do all your work. Ayan, sinabi niya na. You shall labor and do all your work. Hindi sinabing, do some of your work. And then on Sabbath day, you can do rest. No? Pinapatapos niya lahat within six days. Ang trabaho mo. Kasi yung pangpito, ibigay mo sa akin. Sabi ng Lord. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the, Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your strangers who is with your, within your gates. And the last one, please. For in six days the Lord made the heavens. Ayan, ibinalik niya sa creation day. The sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed it and hallowed it. Ganyan ka-sacred ang Sabbath day, mga kapatid. May tanong ako sa inyo. Ano palagay nyo ang kaparusahan nang magde-desecrate ng Ten Commandments? What do you think is the punishment for all people who will violate the Ten Commandments? Death po. At hindi po nabago yun. Because the Word of God stands forever. Kaya kung inaakala nyo po na ang Sabbath day, ang desecration ng Sabbath day, which is the least, oh, take note po ulit then. Alam po natin na dinivide natin ang Ten Commandments in two divisions. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbors as yourself. One to four is love God with all your heart. And the least of that commandment is the Sabbath day. Number four po yan. But desecrating the Sabbath day, you will commit idolatry. Bakit po? Ang tanong ko ngayon. Okay, let's say, bakit po halimbawa, bakit po kayo hindi nasa simbahan ng Sabbath day? For what reasons? Maybe you have appointments. Maybe you have important things to do. Maybe you have emergencies to do. Or maybe you have more important things to acquire or to achieve or needs to desire. Yun lang po yun, di ba? Ngayon, tanong ko, meron pa palang mas mahalaga kaysa sa Diyos, sa inyo, sa isang araw. Ganun po ba ang ibig sabihin? Kaya ipinagpapalit po natin ang linggo sa mga bagay. Gusto ko lang po ipinpoint yung point ng idolatry po. Kasi we are saying that we love the Lord with all our hearts. And God is the first and above all in our lives. Totoo po ba? As Christians we are, this is, should be our declaration. God should be the first 
and above all in our lives. But, bakit may point na kung saan eh nakakompromise po natin yun? Ano po ang dahilan? So, ibig sabihin, on that point, hindi po Diyos ang mas mahalaga. Am I, get, am I making a point? Kasi po, halimbawa, itong araw na to, Sunday, nasa trabaho ako, instead ako nasa simbahan, kasi po maliwala po kayo, kung meron mang isang place na gusto ng Diyos sa ating lahat, as Christians, tuwing linggo, wala pong iba, kundi simbahan. Nag-worship, nag-fellowship, nakikinig ng salita. Pero, kung ikaw wala ka sa simbahan, nagtatrabaho ka, o nasa party ka, o nasa kung saan-saan ka, then, that means, on that very day, on that very moment, mas mahalaga yun kaysa sa Diyos. Am, am I right saying that? So, in a given point of time in your life, God is not the first. And on that given point in time, you are committing idolatry. Medyo harsh pong pakinggan, pero yun po ang katotohanan. Eh. Kasi, supposed to be, God should always be the first and above all, anytime. Hindi po pwedeng bukas, hindi. Ngayon, hindi. O sa, mak- sa makalawa, hindi. Hindi po pwedeng ganun eh. God should always be the first and above all. Ganun po ang dapat, di ba? This is something to ponder, mga kapatid. Kasi alam niyo po ba ako, naniniwala ako, na yung Sabbath day, pagdating ng panahon po, ng pagdating ng Lord, yan po ang magsasyak sa lahat ng maraming Kristiyano. Just imagine, there's only one day. Hindi po natin pwedeng sabihin, Lord, eh, Monday to ano, magbabasa naman ako ng Bible eh. Lord, Bible study naman namin yung biyernes. Sabado, Lord, practice naman namin ng ano. No? So, ang dami ko naman time na binibigay sa inyo, Lord. Eh, Sunday, minsan lang naman ako mag ano. Ang problema, Sunday yun eh. Sabat day niya yun eh. Hindi niya naman sabat ang Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Hindi mo naman sinabing sabat day mo sa Lord yan. The day you declare to the Lord as your sabat day is your sabat day. Then fulfill what is to be a sabat day. Make it holy because He had hallowed it and sanctified it to the Lord. And believe me, hindi po kayo magiging guilty ng desecrating the Sabbath day of the Lord. I really hope na nakukuha niyo po ang point na ito. God blessed it. God sanctified it. God made it as an everlasting covenant from men to follow and be guided. Exodus 31.18 It is the only commandments na isinulat talaga ng Lord by His finger. Look at that. And when He had made the end of speaking with Him on Mount Sinai, He gave Moses two tablets of the testimony. Tablet of stone written in the fingers of God. Ganyan po katindihan. Written within the fingers of God. Deuteronomy 9.10 as well. Inulit niya yan. Then the Lord delivered to me two tablets of stone written with the finger of God and on them were all the words which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain from the midst of the... in the day of the assembly. The only commandments na talagang isinulat po ng Diyos. Hindi po ng tao, kundi ng Diyos. The very most important foundation of man regarding the time and regulations, you know, instructions, even up to this present moment, 
ay sinusunod po. From the very beginning of creation, six days work, one day off. One day for God. No. One day for God. The very first benefit, bakit po? Rest. Patayin mo man ang katawan nyo ng anim na araw, sabi ng Lord, magpahinga ka anak. Isang araw, magpahinga ka. Kailangan mo yan. To be recharged again. To regain all your strength. Eh, machine nga, hindi ba? Machine nga, kailangan magpahinga eh. Para tumagal. What more tayo? You know? Machine needs rest. What more us? Isang bagaling strength natin, Deuteronomy 8.18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for He who gives you the power to gain wealth. Ayan na. Ayan na. That He may establish His covenant with you, word to your fathers, as if to this day. Even yung strength mo for the six days galing sa Kanya. Kaya sabi ng Lord, Anak, magpahinga ka. I-re-recharge kita para ibalik ko yung lakas mo ulit. Para makapagtrabaho ka ulit ng six days again. Ganun ka ano sa Lord eh. Ganun kabait ang Lord talaga eh. God wants to build up and the most important thing ito, mga kapatid, tingnan nyo to, paano nyo ibibuild up ang relationship nyo sa mga mahal nyo sa buhay? Paano kayo magkakaroon ng magandang relationship sa mga mahal nyo sa buhay? Anong dapat nyo gawin? To be with them. To fellowship. Maniwala po kayo. Kung ang minamahal nyo, hindi nyo, you will not be together with them. With them. Hindi po kayo makakabuild ng relationship. Yun ang gusto pong gawin ng Diyos. Kahit na anim na araw na talagang inuubos mo yung panahon mo sa trabaho mo kung saan-saan, sabi ng Lord, anak, alika, mag-banding tayo. That's what it is. God wants to bond with you and me Amen. just for a day. Kahit na binabali, wala mo siya ng six days. Just bond with Him for a day. Yun ang gusto ng Lord. For our benefit, no? God wants to build up a good and lasting relationship with man. A natural and willing closeness and intimacy with His perfect creation. An everlasting relationship that will lead to everlasting life. Yun po ang number one na hangarin ng Lord, kaya may Sabbath day. No? Bukod sa mapahinga ka, ay maging banding kayong dalawa. Intimacy, closeness, being together more is the one that builds a closer relationship. The more time you spend with somebody, the closer you will be with that somebody. Hindi po ba? But the lesser you spend time with that somebody, the lesser is your intimacy. And of course, ika nga eh, you will love to spend your time or will rather spend your time with the one who is more important than you are. Kaya nga sinasabi ko po eh, siguro, isang linggo, mas mahalaga yung trabaho sa inyo kaysa sa Diyos. Kaya you rather spend working rather than spending time with the Lord. Ito pa isa. O, magtatrabaho ka, pero pupunta ka sa church. Anong nauna? Trabaho. O sinong priority? Diyos ba? O trabaho? No, very common sense po ito. Very simple analogy po ito. Sabi mo priority ang Lord. Nauna ba ang Lord? O trabaho? Diba trabaho? So hindi priority ang Lord. Kung priority ang Lord, o sige, simba ka muna bago akong trabaho. Yun, priority. Sasabihin ko pa nga, i-consider kong priority yun. Kasi nauna ang Lord. Yan. Kung i-apply po natin ang mga salita, eh talaga pong ipakikita niya talaga yung right way ng, ng pagsunod eh. You know? When say we prioritize above all, dapat ganun po. 
Ba yung balancing pa? Sabi na, oh, balansehin natin ang buhay. Pag binalansin mo ang buhay, wala na. May kapantay na ang Diyos. Hindi po pwedeng balansin sa Diyos. Kailangan ang Diyos laging mabigat sa atin. Laging nasa ta- taas at nasa unahan. And always be the heaviest value in our lives. Yun po. Kaya hindi po pwedeng balansin sa Diyos. Ano? Balansin po natin yung ibang aspect ng buhay, pero hindi po sa Diyos. Hindi po pwede yan. Now, is it right to say that, oh, you are the most important person in my life, but I chose to be with Him? Pwede po masabihin yun? Oh, an- daling, mahal na mahal kita, pero mas gusto ko sa Kanya. Pwede ba yun? Ganun? Oh, oh, sweetheart, ikaw ang buhay ko, pero dito muna ako. Pwede ba yung ganun? Does that show really love? You are my priority, but I have to do this first. I know that this is what it says, but I have no choice. Hmm, lahat po tayo may choice. Actually, it's all about choice. Nasubukan niyo na bang ipaglaban yung situation niyo? Sabi, para sabihin, hindi, kailang kung nasa simbahan. Kung gusto niyo, pagkatapos ng simba namin, pupuntahan ko kayo. Nasubukan na po ba natin yan? No? And believe me, brothers and sisters, as we close, Proverbs 13, 13 to 14 says, He who despises the word will be destroyed. Ayan po. No? Proverbs 13, 13 to 14. Tingnan niyo po ito. He who despises the word will be destroyed. But he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn away from the snares of death. Revelations 22, 12 to 14 said, And behold, I am coming quickly, the Lord says. My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do His commandments, and they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter to the gates in the city. Now I hope and pray, mga kapatid, na sana kung meron tayong sisimulang pagsunod sa Lord, you know, ay ang pagsunod ng talagang total. First, sa Sabbath day natin. Kasi maniwala po kayo, ako, I believe in my heart na pag sa Sabbath pa lang, sumasablay na tayo. Mahirapan po tayong sundin ng iba pa. Kasi maniwala pa kayo, ang Sabbath day, ang pinakalis na commandments among the greatest commandment ng Lord na to love God. Kasi doon po lang po sa Sabat, mapapakita na natin kung siya ang ating una sa buhay at siya ang abab sa buhay. Kung naniniwala po tayo na God will provide all your needs, maniwala po kayo, i-challenge nyo ang Lord para patunayan niya sa inyo kung gano'n siya ka-faithful ka sa salita niya. Ipuprovide po niya ang pangangailangan nyo Maniwala po kayo dyan. I will never, I will never have a second thought of that. Kung susundin natin ang salita niya. Kasi po lahat ng salita niyang susundin natin, ililid po tayo sa tama at sa kabutihan. Yun lang po ang gusto kong iyan sa inyo. And I pray and hope na makita po natin ang katotohanan. Kung gusto niyo pong makita kung ano ang ang Ika nga, kaparusahan. Let's just bring on Exodus 31, 12 to 15. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to all the children of Israel saying, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and, and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath therefore for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. 
For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. Work shall be done for six days, but on seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on that Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Gusto ko lang pong patunayan sa inyo. Kung ngayon nagtatanong po kayo, ano mangyayari sa akin pag dinesecrate ko ang Sabat ng Lord? Well, wala po akong pwedeng sabihin kundi ang salita ng Lord eh. You know? Ayan na po ang salita ng Lord. Eh, it is our choice, by the way. Lahat po tayo ay may freedom to choose, whether life or death. You know? Hindi po natin talaga pwedeng i-compromise ang salita ng Lord kasi faithful ang Lord sa salita niya. You know? At wala pong abrogation o pagbabagong ginawa ang Lord, even to the present generation, even sa pagdating ng Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, nadagdagan pa nga po eh. Alam niyo po bang gumagawa ng trabaho ang Lord? Pero ano pong trabaho ang ginagawa niya every Sabbath? Works that will glorify God. Healing on the sick. No? Preaching on the synagogue. No? Uh, bringing back to life people. Those things na mag-glorify sa Lord without gain on yourselves. Hindi po para kumita ka ng pera kundi para magbigay ka ng buhay at serbisyo sa Lord. Yung po ang pinakita ng Panginoon sa Kristo. You know? Even you read the Bible, makikita niyo po ang katotohanan sinasabi ko sa inyo ngayon. You know? That's why, ang panalangin ko po at uh, hope ko na sana po makita po natin ang tunay na kahalagahan ng Sabbat day na ito. Kung ano pa mong pong araw ang dinideclare niyong sabat niyo sa Lord, by all means, do it. Sundin niyo po ito ng according to the will of God kung papano. At maniwala po kayo, mabibless kayo. Lord, as we stand before you right now, O God, Lord, we are hoping and praying na Ipagkalob niyo po sa amin ang talent, Lord, ang gift, O God, ang opportunity, Lord, na sundin totally, completely, O Lord, ang mga commandments mo. But first, O God, pagsunod sa Sabbath day mo. Lord, tulungan mo kami. Hindi namin po ito kaya sa aming sariling kakayanan. But Lord, help us We need you to fulfill and totally obey, O God, the Sabbath Day Commandments. Lord, kung meron po kaming nagawa in the past, O Lord, na we are so guilty, O Lord, we are asking forgiveness. Forgive us for that violation. Forgive us for that compromise, O Lord, na ginagawa namin without knowing, O God, and aware na guilty pala kami ng idolatry. Lord, help us to put you really in front and above all. Help us to give you the priority, especially on your holy day, the Sabbath day, Lord. Tulungan mo po kami sa aming mga schedules. Tulungan mo po kami, O Lord, sa aming mga appointments. Tulungan mo po kami na wag po itong pumatak ng Sabbath day, Lord. Dahil, Lord, mga empleyado lang kami. Under kami sa mga authorities na probably walang paniniwala sa inyo. But, Lord, we believe in you, Lord, na ikaw ang gagawa ng paraan, Lord, sa mga situations namin ito. Help us, Father. And in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord, ang heart desire namin ay really not to profane or despise your Sabbath day. Help us, O God. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless us.